In a fast fading channel, you get a new channel realization every time you transmit something. So it makes good sense that the transmitter cannot know in advance what the channel is going to be. So the received signal in the size system at time L will be a realization GL of the channel times the symbol that transmit X of L plus noise NL. And the capacity in this case is achieved by having a large number L of different symbols that transmit, a block of it, then for each of those realizations you're computing what would have been the capacity, log 2 of 1 plus Q, which is the transmit power, absolute value square of GL, and then you divide by N0, which is the noise power spectral density. And then you should average over those things. You sum it up and you divide with the number of realizations in your block. It's L. And then you take the limit, L goes to infinity, to consider an infinitely long block of data. Then you achieve your capacity. And by the law of large numbers, this is conversion to the expected value of log 2 of 1 plus Q, absolute value square of G, which is a random variable, and then N0. The underlying assumption is that you get new independent realization of the channel every time you transmit something and they come from an ergodic random process. Therefore, it's called the ergodic capacity. And it has the same shape as the capacity that we're used to. Log 2 or 1 plus some kind of SNR expression. Then there is an expectation in front of the logarithm because this SNR depends on the random realization of the channel. We can compare it with the corresponding non-fading channel where we also get log 2 or 1 plus SNR, but now this SNR expression contains a G that is not random. Here is an example where we are comparing the non-fading case with the fast Rayleigh fading case. For the same SNR, and the SNR in dB is shown on the horizontal axis. And vertically, you have the rate in bits per symbol. At low SNR, the two curves are overlapping. That shows that then it's no drawback of having a random channel. It's just because log 1 plus SNR is approximately linear, so if the SNR is sometimes lower and sometimes higher than its average value, well that is averaging out and you get the same behavior. But at high SNR we have a gap. Rayleigh fading case is worse. It's up to 0.83 bits per symbol worse. That's what you are achieving when the SNR goes to infinity. And that is because you have a logarithmic behavior, log 1 plus SNR, and if the SNR is sometimes lower than the average and sometimes above, when you are losing more when it's lower than you're benefiting when it goes up. Just as in the slow fading case, we can benefit from having multiple receive antennas in the fast fading case. Say that we have M receive antennas and one transmit antenna in this SIMA system, then the ergodic capacity becomes the expected value of log 2 or 1 plus an SNR that contains the norm square of the channel. If we have IID Rayleigh fading, we can compute this expectation exactly, but let's instead focus on computing a lower and upper bound and look at their gap. So an upper bound is log 2 or 1 plus m, the number of antennas, times the SNR per antenna. And this is what you will get as capacity of a non-fading channel. So this shows that the ID Rayleigh fading or actually any fading distribution can never beat the corresponding non-fading case. Then with ID Rayleigh fading, the lower bound is log 2 or 1 plus m minus 1 times SNR. And when m is large, then m minus 1 and m is roughly the same thing, and therefore there is a small gap between the upper and lower bound, which shows that we are losing very little from having a fading channel. And this is due to the diversity gain again. We get a lot of diversity when you have a lot of antennas. Here is an example of the rate in bit per symbol that we are receiving for different number of antennas. The SNR is 10 dB. The red curve is the ID really fading ergodic capacity. The black curve is the upper bound, which we achieve with the non-fading channel, and the blue curve is the lower bound. And it's a very bad lower bound at low number of antennas, then we have a big gap, but then it eventually becomes very close to the upper bound. And the red curve is relatively close to the black curve all the time, but when we have, say, five antennas or so, the gap is very tiny. This is because of the large diversity gain we are getting by having many antennas, so the fading variations are averaging out. And when we have a lot of antennas and talk about fast fading, we also like to call this channel hardening. In summary, in a fast fading setup where we get many channel realization during our communication, we can define a capacity which is non-zero, we call it the ergodic capacity, and it contains the expectation with respect to the random channel. 
At lowest Na, there is not much difference from a corresponding non-fading case, but at highest Na, there is a gap. That gap can be reduced by having multiple antennas at the receiver side, for example. 